Cape Cod is a land shaped by long processes of coastal erosion. Thousands of years of wind and water, waves and weather, have scraped and shifted the sands on our shores. Climate change has increased the speed at which the sea level around the Cape has risen. The most recent downscaled sea level rise projections are indicating that we might see that level of sea level rise in only 20 or 30 years. So we may be seeing what feels like a 100-year storm a lot more frequently in the very near future. As reported by Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, the sea level around Cape Cod is 6.5 feet higher than it was roughly 2,000 years ago, and one foot higher than it was just 100 years ago. Well over half of the Massachusetts shoreline is eroding, and around 11% can be labeled as critically eroding. Erosion is one part of a multi-step natural process which involves weathering, erosion, and deposition. Weathering happens when rock breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces through physical, chemical, and even biological processes. Erosion is when the weathered material is transported by gravity, wind, or water. Deposition occurs when eroded material is accumulated in a new area. So the most common misperception I hear about erosion is that it's a problem. Erosion isn't necessarily a problem unless we have something in harm's way we being humans, society. If we think of it very basically, erosion is just more sediment leaving an area than is coming into the area. Accretion is when you have more coming in than leaving. And sometimes you may have a beach that looks very similar day to day and year to year, but you can have a lot of material moving along it. Cape Cod's shoreline can be sectioned into areas which are predominantly experiencing erosion and areas which are experiencing approximately equal rates of deposition and erosion. Erosion can often be unpredictable. There can be lots of erosion in one area for a few years and then nothing for decades. Erosion can occur suddenly due to storms or cliff or dune collapse. And it can occur more gradually due to sea level increase caused by climate change. What is eroded from one area is typically deposited in another area. So you can have flow along the beach parallel to shore and that can get interrupted or slowed down by jetties and groins. You can also have flow perpendicular to shore. You need to look at a particular area to see where the sediment's coming from and where the sediment is going. Right here in Brewster, we have examples of erosion on the sides of cliffs as well as against the dunes. This can be seen at two different Brewster Conservation Trust properties. At Ellis Landing, the dunes have retreated over the years. The BCT has planted beach grass to help stabilize the dunes. At Eddy Bay, the cliff has noticeably retreated just in the last several decades. These maps help demonstrate how the cliff is falling away over time. When people walk up and down the dunes and over the sensitive vegetation, what you're doing is you're accelerating that process and you're not giving time for the plant community to adapt to that. And you know, the saying is these plants are sensitive, they grow by the inch and they die by the foot. And so going down a bluff, sliding down a bluff, things like that, that really, really accelerates the process. The particular geography of Brewster really impacts how erosion affects Brewster. It's located along Cape Cod Bay. And this particular exposure is more vulnerable to winter storms versus tropical storms. There are several strategies people have developed in the face of erosion. The Resilient Cape Cod project, launched by the Cape Cod Commission, specified the main strategies as protection, accommodation, and retreat. Protection comes in the form of building up resistance to erosion along cliffs and dunes. This includes sand nourishment, which involves building up sand by pushing it up from the beach or dumping it over a cliff bank, and biomimicry, which can involve planting stakes to help keep sand in place. Revetments, or man-made erosion control, should be avoided when possible. Accommodation includes efforts like marsh restoration, which help bays and estuaries maintain their natural tidal flow. The Herring River Restoration Project in Wellfleet seeks to accomplish this, while at the same time restoring habitat. A retreat strategy means building and moving houses and other buildings away from the coast. This protects them from damage and helps communities and homeowners avoid pricey mitigation costs. If you have an eroding shoreline, 
that has some kind of protection for the upland. It's going to deny sediment going into the beach and dune system. So over time, you're going to get a deficit. You can help mitigate erosion by assisting in volunteer restoration efforts. You can also be courteous of posted signs and regulations where dunes and cliffs are fragile. Do not walk, climb, or slide on cliffs or dunes in restricted areas. Blowouts, or large erosional events during high winds, are more likely where vegetation has been trampled or driven on. So at Eddy Bay, what the Brewster Conservation Trust has done is we've put up a split rail fence there to prevent people from accessing the bluff. Not only does it just sort of keeping people back, but you know that bluff is really unstable. So it's a safety thing as well as a prevention thing. I think trying to get involved with your community and being an informed stakeholder. It's not just the people who own the shoreline. There's certainly a lot of folks who enjoy the shoreline and play a big role in what happens along it. Along Cape Cod, if we didn't have erosion, we wouldn't have dunes and beaches. We don't have massive mountains inland and large rivers bringing that material down to our shoreline. In order to have beaches and dunes on Cape Cod, we need to erode what was laid down by glaciers tens of thousands of years ago. Lastly, we can all acknowledge that erosion has been part of the Cape's natural history for thousands of years. We won't always be able to stop the tide, but we can learn the best ways to live with it.